Hey everybody, CVH here, and in today's video I have for you guys some highlights with Midrange Sorcerer. If you've seen yesterday's video, you might have seen some item sorcerer games on the ladder, and this is the more straightforward uh, and also more popular version of Sorcerer that you'll probably encounter on the ladder. I've played a good amount of Midrange Sorcerer before on the channel, and honestly I just love the deck a lot. A lot of the versions do play Supreme Matromancer though, or they have played Supreme Matromancer I should say, and that's a lot of the reason I wanted to bring the deck back a little bit on the channel, uh, because people don't really know where this deck sits now that Supreme Matromancer has been nerfed to a 10 cost card. This was one of the most staple finishers in the deck, uh, but before I get into this deck a little bit, before I get into the highlights, I didn't want to talk too much about the deck because it is very straightforward as a typical mid-range deck. It's just looking to curve out on the opponent uh, and hit your opponent and be moderately aggressive against the slower decks especially, uh, and with the tra traditional mid-range decks matchups, you will have to play a bit more defensively against the aggro and token strategies. Uh, without getting too much into the deck, I would like to highlight a few specific specific cards. As with the item sorcerer deck, there are a lot of different ways to play this deck as well. A lot of tech cards go in and out. Uh, certain cards like the dragon tail saviors are in different numbers. Some people play cunning ally. Uh, but the most notable of the cards, I'm going to go over three uh, before we get into the highlights. The first of which is Bone Colossus. Now, Bone Colossus has seen a lot of play in Midrange Sorcerer before. I've played versions, and this is before the Atromancer nerf, I've played versions without Bone Colossus with Atromancer. Uh, I've played versions with Bone Colossus and no Atromancer, such as today's version. I've done that even before when Atromancer caused nine in certain metagames because Atromancer is not quite as good against the Ice Storm control decks. Uh, and I've even played versions with both. I've played versions with uh, two of each, three of one, two of the other. It really just depended. And, and with that Dramatic started 10 costs now, I didn't really feel like it was where this deck wanted to be. And there were a lot of other mid-range cards, such as the three copies of Bone Colossus, that I thought could fit the role better. So we are playing three of these, just a fantastic way to immediately get a lot of pressure on the board much earlier than Atromancer can come down now. It was already earlier than Atromancer by two turns, and now it's by three turns, so just that much more important. I do think if you're going to play mid-range Sorcerer right now on the ladder, Bone Colossus is something worth investing in. The other two interesting cards cards I were going to want to talk about really quick. Uh, there are two copies of Ice Storm. I did actually tech this card in the last time I played Midrange Sorcerer on the channel, so this isn't necessarily a new tech choice. Uh, that version also played Bone Colossus, I think. But Ice Storm uh, has continued to prove worthwhile in this deck to me because of the continued popularity of the token strategies. Token Crusader and Token Mage are still decks you're likely to encounter a good amount of on the ladder. And this deck runs a lot of creatures with wards, such as Windkeep Spellsword, so you're not always going to be killing a lot of your own things. Even though a lot of your cards are weak, those wards can help you protect so you can use Ice Storm a lot of the times not just as a reset button, but as a one-sided reset button. The last card I was experimenting with in today's video is Stronghold Eradicator. So this card is filling our 5-drop slot, and there are a lot of different cards we could be playing on turn 5. Uh, I would play Shadowfin Priest, but I'm already playing Sorcerer's Negation. Didn't really think the support removal was too necessary. I've tested White Run Protector before, maybe you've seen me do that on stream. Uh, a long time ago, I played a lot of Shornhelm Champion, and I am a fan of the card. I think it's pretty fantastic. However, the reason I'm playing Eradicator is because stat-wise, it beats a lot of the other cards in the game, and virtually every single card your opponent's going to be playing on turn 5. The most notable of these being Thorn His mage so if you plop down a stronghold eradicator your ramp scout opponent's not going to be able to contest that with a thorn hist mage it will be able to be killed for free by the 6-6 body this card also has a bit of utility if you're able to play it in the shadow lane and you want to give one of your opponent's covered creatures guard uh, that will remove the cover and allow you to attack things that wouldn't normally be able to be attacked uh, that's not really the primary use in this deck a lot of control decks i've seen people play this in control monk i know it was popular for a while as a threat to beat other mid-range decks uh, and also to get that guard on the cover so you could act as a removal option uh, this being a mid-range deck and fairly aggressive we're mostly just playing the eradicator in this version for the raw stats uh, because thief of dream unfortunately no longer gets the job done as far as stats are concerned. I would much rather play a 5 cost 6-6 six, six than a 5 cost 4-4, four, four, even if that 4-4 four, four could potentially give us some more card advantage. So those are the three cards, the Bone Colossus, the Ice Storms, and the three copies of Stronghold Eradicator that I wanted to briefly mention before we get into some highlights. And as always, if you enjoy the video and the games, feel free to leave a like, stay subscribed to the channel for more Legends content, follow my stream in the description. I'll see you guys next time. Yeah, if you're not going to play a control deck or ramp scout, Oda Vang's probably not required. Any cheap fun deck for people to just start. Yeah, I mean, the starter decks are not good. I mean, they're good enough to grind a couple ranks, but they're not close to competitive decks. And I wouldn't say decks in this game are very cheap either. Like the optimized versions, most of them have a good amount of legendaries. So options are limited, but luckily the game is pretty generous, Arena is very generous, Twitch drops are just like nuts generous, so...
the amount of work you're putting in at least. Good value stuff. Our opponent's deep in the tank on- oh man, he's running the full combo version of Item Sorcerer. I think. We can get better value out of Dragon Tail. Ah, I should play this though. I mean, he's probably not playing Negation. I'm gonna go with this. It also rewards a Crown Quartermaster top deck slightly more. And I'm not playing it into the Lightning Bolt turn. I shall be your eyes and ears. Okay, I will be killing that. The super combo of Eversion, discarding a card every turn, it can be pretty powerful. I want to start pressuring very soon, though. American and Kano are going to be very good, I think. If we actually get to pressure. If we fall behind and he starts doing item things, it'll be horrible. I stand behind my work. Oh Somebody man, he's playing that in deck two. A lot of the versions that play this kind of stuff do not play the Master Swordsmith. Too late for you. Well. Just in case he kills this, or kills one of them, the other one will probably still get a good trade. Don't have mace, please. Shackle my dragon and attack over my- oh god. Firebolt? And mammoth. Confound you! Careful there, friend. Well, we have a pretty dominating board. I wonder if he's found room for Ice Storm as well. Gotten two procs off the Swordsmith. Which makes his deck a lot scarier. What's going down, RNG? Oh, well, hopefully the vacation's been fun. Where have you been? Yeah, I play in Dice Storm a bit too hard if I don't trade this in, so I think I will. The longer the odds, the Found you. Keep the ward alive. But yeah, it seems like we have a really good board here. Not a board that I think Item Sorcerer can deal with this early. When I was playing it, I felt unfavored against the regular midrange sorcerers at least. It's the point of arrest to deny last gasps and steal threats. Just, you know, basically gets a threat off the board. So it can't attack you. And then you can also benefit off of, like, a static effect or last gasp or whatever. You can also combo with cards like this and actually play them again. So then they can eventually attack. Oh, cool. Wouldn't have expected that. That sounds pretty awesome. Solid vacation. It almost feels wasteful to use a 4 damage emmerich on that thing. Too late for you. You. So you know, I think I'm just gonna go face. I hate this crowd. It's damned uncomfortable. I keep a spare blade in my boot. Oh, nice. Did you get the coconut milk in there? Because I thought that was going to be kind of strange, but it was really good. Yeah, what's the worst he could possibly do? You have 20 damage on board. Yeah, I just want to make sure I attack in the right order to guarantee it there. Not that any prophecy would really stop us because we have like a lot of extra damage, you know, etc.
the lady. Why does College of Winterhold sound so much louder than everything else in the game? Oh wait, how do Skeevers sound? Did they nerf the sound effect on Skeevers? Yeah, they did. I think they nerfed the uh, the Skeevers sound effect a while back, but I remember when that was incredibly loud. And people were actually testing it out a lot when it released, too. That was an obnoxious time to play Legends, I'll tell you. I haven't tried Item Mage. I've tried Item Sorcerer a lot. My uh, last video on YouTube was of Item Sorcerer as well. I do love me some Sorcerer. Let's go ahead and take the hopefully favorable trade. YouTube channel is down in the panels. Clearly no one looks at the panels ever. But I will also link it. Immortal title the first time I played it? Wait, the item deck? Oh, item mage, gotcha. Looking at the panels would require scrolling down. Well, I got bad news for you. If you click that link I just linked, it's gonna take you to a whole other tab. Then I ran out of cards and lost. Jesus. So I gotta play that during to Sovngarde. Never run out of cards. Except for if you run out of cards again. Eh, sure. I mean, yeah. I don't want to play it for my hand anytime soon. Let me kill. Nah, I guess I would have wanted to play it. Yeah, I think it still adds to that next turn. Oh, nice. Your blood will spill. Almost perfect, one would say. Not another tab. Another tab. You got siblings? I have a half-brother and half-sister who I've never met. Either of them. Do you not fear me, mortal? You sure I think I once briefly talked to my half-brother on the phone, like, like hi, like it was like a, a sentence at best. But yeah, never really, done, never really met him. I also got a card. By doing this, duh. Wait, do we actually do this? Yeah, I mean, sure. Let's keep the ward on that thing. I also get to hit for more damage. And we just get the firebolt right back. If we had a prophecy creature there, we just firebolt it. And it's hard to lose from here, honestly. What's better, aggro crusader or aggro archer? Probably crusader at the moment, thanks to Ulfric's house, Carl. That's what I wanted to test today. Damn, I forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me right before the stream ends. It's almost time to eat, man. Make it good. Or even so are such annoying cards, I hate them, but they put red on the map. I love them. Confound you. Your blood will spill. By the eighth, they will meet their makers. Talk about face damage. Oh, you got an eight damage, Emmerich? My my highest Emmerich ever was ten. That was a long time ago though. Oh, you mean if I had drawn it? That would have been amazing. Oh. The dream is dead. Well, it's not dead. I could still get an 8 damage Emmerich. The longer the odds, the sweeter the victory. Together, I could also Ice Storm for tons shot. of value. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm getting it. I could also just Sage and try to kill him if I roll exactly charge, but I think the Ice Storm is actually just a better line to take. Oh, here comes another Prophecy Creature. Yes. Yes. I lose one card and a couple wards, and he loses like six things. Jeez. Probably more cool, because he's like, do I sack something to play a guard? He's thinking about it. 
Just, just give me the full value. Oh, it's that. He's probably thinking I attacked in the wrong order because then I could have attacked with that, but I had a plan. We could have 1 in 7 lethaled him there, but I think this gives me lethal, or it lets me win the game a higher percentage of the time. And we could always go for the Sage next turn. God, that was such a good Ice Storm. We stand united. It's definitely an argument to teching Ice Storm in this kind of deck. Premium Wood Orc Headhunter looks very nice. I forgot how nice that looked. The question is, would we have rolled charge? I have to know. Oh! <laughs> Damn. Eh, 